What's going on guys? Next.js is an open source authentication solution for Next.js and this solution is designed to work with any auth service. I'm going to leave a link here to a video where I explain how to set it up in a Next.js application. In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate a custom provider to sign into our Next.js application using Next.js. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and let's get to it. This is our Next.js application and here we are in the catch all route file where we're going to set up a new provider. In this case, it will be a custom provider. So the way that we can add custom providers in Next.js is using the credentials provider. So this is providers.credentials. Here we need to pass an object and within this object, we can set up a name this will be the label that is going to be shown in the signing page. This could be something like signing with a custom provider or something like that. I'm just going to put custom provider. And here we can also set up the fields for the signing form. So this is credentials. And here we can set the fields for that signing form. So we're going to have a username. And here we can specify the label for this field. So this will be username. The type of this field. This is text. And we can add a placeholder. So here we can use, for example, let's say that we are going to use the email for login. So here we can put email. And here we can say john at doe.com as a placeholder. And the other field would be password. In this case, I'm setting up username and password login, but we can also set up here a two factor authentication login as well. So in this case, the label will be password. and the type will be password. Okay, and those are basically the fields that we're going to include in our signing form, username and password. Okay, and now we need to define an authorized function that is going to receive the credentials from this signing form that we configured here. So this is authorized and is basically going to receive the credentials from the signing form. We can do this async, so I'm going to add async here. And within the authorize function, we need to add the code to authenticate the user. So from here, we can call a local function that goes to the database and retrieves the user for the credentials that we pass to the authorize function, or we can call an external API passing the credentials that we receive here, just to keep it simple, I'm just going to hard code the user that I should receive from this custom authentication service. So I can do something like const user. And this user is going to include two properties. Name, let's say John Doe, and the email, let's say Sean at Doe. Dot com. And basically next out is going to include these two attributes within a JSON Bob token. And we need to enable JSON Bob tokens for sessions. So here we need to add session and we need to enable JWT for sessions. So this is JWT and we need to set this value as true. And here I forgot to return this user. Okay, let's try this. So let's go to the terminal and let's run npm run dev. Okay, let's go to the application and let's try to sign in with our custom provider. I'm going to click here on sign in. Here I'm going to add some credentials. It doesn't matter. I'm just hard coding the results. So this will be test at email.com. This will be test. And I'm going to click on 
sign in with custom provider. And as we can see here, I'm signing as Sean Doe. This is basically the name that we are setting here. And if we take a look at the cookies, and if we go to the next out session token value, this is a JSON block token. And if we take a look at it here, if we inspect that value, as we can see here, we have the JSON block token where the payload includes the name of the user, Sean Doe, and the email. So for this credentials provider, authenticated users are not persisted in the database. And the only way that we have to use this credential provider is by enabling JWT tokens in sessions. A typical scenario here will be calling an external API to authenticate the user, passing the credentials. So I'm going to replace this value from here and I'm going to use Axios to call an external API. I'm going to use mock API as a service. Here I create this login resource. And when I call this resource, it's going to return a random value from this list here. Okay, so first let's install Axios. npm install Axios. Okay, let's close this. Let's remove this. And here this will be await axios dot and this will be post and here we need to pass the url and here we are going to pass the credentials okay let's define a constant here const url and i'm going to grab the value from here this is the url from mock api that is going to return the user data Okay, here I'm going to pass URL. Okay, I'm going to rename this. This will be response. And I'm going to check if I receive any response. So if response, then I'm going to return the data of that response. That will be the user data. So this is response dot data. I'm going to check that data using console log. So this will be response.data. And in either case, I'm going to return just no. Okay, before running this, let's take a look at what is the data that we are going to receive from this endpoint when we perform a post request. So let's go to post one. And here I'm going to paste that URL and I'm going to perform a post request. So I'm going to click on send. And we're going to see here that we're going to receive a random result from this endpoint. So I'm going to click again on send and I'm going to receive another object with an identifier, a name and an email. So we're going to receive a random response, but this is just for testing purposes. So let's go back and now let's run the application npm run dev and now let's try to sign in with our custom provider that is going to call to this mock api i'm going to click on the link and now i'm going to click on sign in i'm going to enter some random credentials i'm going to click on sign in with custom provider and here we are signing with the random user that the mock api provided to us so again if we go to the cookies application and we take a look at the session token for next out i'm going to copy this json web token and we can expect that value here i'm going to paste that value here and as we can see here we have the name and the email and if we take a look at the application yeah this is the value that we received from the mock api endpoint that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching and I see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.